Hello everybody and welcome back to another video in our Jetpack Library series where we're going through some of the different Jetpack libraries and putting them together, seeing how we can build a larger and more useful application. So if you don't have the code for this video, you can get the starting code down in the link in the description below. Or if you've been following along, you can once again just use that code from the previous video and we'll be picking up right from there. So in the last video, we talked about unit testing for our composables, and we put this book screen, um, this book screen test together with a few different tests for testing our initial state if it's rendered on the UI, if the loaded state is rendered on the UI, and then finally if our um, if our click on book actually does what we expect it to do. And now basically in this video. We've tested our Android composables, um, although not, again, not thoroughly and exhaustively. You can do that a lot more if you wanna keep going and test everything on this UI, but this is just an introduction and demo for how to do that. So in this video, over on our left-hand side in the project window, we've been putting all of our composable tests inside of this Android test folder, but we can now go ahead and minimize that and we're gonna open up this com test folder, which is another one that was there from the beginning and that we've totally ignored up until this point. So if you open this up, basically you have another um, demo unit test for how to test something. And this is gonna be testing, um, so in the project window, this com Android test, this is gonna be every test that you need to run on an actual Android device or a emulated Android device in our case. And then this next one, com test, this is going to be just for purely testing Kotlin code that can simply run on the JVM on your computer and doesn't actually need to run on the, on the Android emulator or an actual Android device itself. So in this class, we can test our view model, our use cases, our repositories, anything that's purely Kotlin that doesn't display or use any um, native libraries we can test in here. So in this video, we're gonna go over how to, how to do unit testing on our view model and then also on one of our use cases. So we can start that by coming into the project window, right click on the book tracker under the com test, and we're gonna create a new class in there. And this is gonna be our books view model test. And then once we have that, real quickly, let's just go back up to our presentation layer and to our book list, and let's look in our books view model. And you can see here we are getting the state. Um, real quickly, let's look at that state. So the state, again, has a list of books. It has is loading for when it's initially loading that list of books, and then it has error. So to test our view model, we basically need to test the same three um, the same three states that we tested for our unit testing on our composables is initially, before this is done loading, is our state set to is loading equals true? And then after this is done, does our state get now, is it now set to is loading equals false? And do we have an actual list of books in our state? And then three, if this fails, do we get an error? Now we go back into book view model test and in here, I'm going to go ahead and add another function. So this is going to be private, fun, and what we're doing is we're testing our view model. So we need to get an instance of our view model that we can test. So this function is just going to be called get view model. And that's going to return a books view model. And in here, we're going to say val repo equals a books repository and then inside the books repository uh, whoops not that one inside of our books repository we are going to need to add an api and we're going to need to add a books dao and i'm just going to leave both of those blank for now we're going to come back to this because essentially um, instead of passing it the real API in the real books DAO, which is interacting through retrofit with the database out on the web, and then through room with a local database in my application, 
Um, I don't want to do that because that's going to be very inefficient running those calls, those network calls and those database calls on every single test. So we're going to create dummy implementations of these that we can use to um, basically get data that we need to test our view model without doing the actual calls that the repository would do. So we'll come back to that part. And then down here, I'm just going to return a books view model. And inside of that books view model, we need to populate all of the parameters. So toggled finished use case is going to be equal to a toggle finished use case. And then inside of that get sorted books from cache use case is going to be equal to a get sorted books from cache, cache use case type. And inside of that, hand it the repository. So repo equals repo. And then once we have that, we need to actually hand the repository to the top one too. So repo equals repo. I think I'm missing a comma right there. Okay. Um, and then after that, we need to hand it our next one, which is our git books use case, which is equal to our git initial books use case from net. Inside of that, I need a repo which I'm going to set equal to my repo and then get sorted use books, um, get sorted books from cache use case is going to be equal to a new get sorted books from cache use case. And again, give that one a repository as well. So now we have everything, well, just about everything that we need to get our view model back. We only need to populate the API in the DAO. Because both our API and then our books DAO are implementations of interfaces, so we're actually going to be able to generate dummy classes for them that we can implement. And then we can test the same functionality for the view model without any actual real world um, HTTP calls or database calls. Before we do that, let's down here really quick, just put the shell of our first function. So this is going to be with the test annotation function initial state is produced. Again, the naming standard here, we have um, the state under test, which is our initial state. Whoops. We have our initial state produced, and then we have is produced, which is the behavior that we're testing for there. Um, in here, we're just going to say val view model equals get view model. And now before we move on with the rest of that code, let's go ahead and make our dummy impl implementations for the API and then the books DAO so that we can test everything. So over here in the left under book tracker, we're going to right click on there. We're going to do new Kotlin class or file. And in here, we're going to name this our fake books API. Hit enter on that. And then this class, fake books API, is going to inherit from books API. And we get an error here because we're not implementing all the functions. So go ahead and click implement on those. And all we have to do is fill in where it says to do here. Uh, but before we can do that, because we're no longer getting data from um, from our retrofit, we're no longer getting it from our online database. We do need data somewhere that we can pull from. To get that data for our test, come back over to our mock data object. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this get domain books function that we created last time. Paste that twice. And then this I'm going to change from domain to remote. And then down here, we're going to change all of these to remote books. And on the remote books, we need to delete this false because that's the field that we're not tracking on the remote books anymore. And then this one, we're going to change to get local books. And make sure to import these if it if it comes up red. 
Um, and this, instead of making it an array list of, I'm just going to have it be a list of because I don't want an array in this instance. Once we have that data, let's go back into fake books API. And all I need to do is this get books now needs to be delay um, 500. I'm just going to put a small delay in there just to mimic the um, what we would have if we actually did a real network call. So a 500 millisecond delay. Um, and we're going to return mock data dot get remote books. And then down here for get book, um, I'm just going to leave that one as a to do because for our books view model, all we're actually testing is this top function. Now we have to provide the DAO as well. So if we go back to our books view model, we could set the API equal to um, now a fake books API. But we have to give that a DAO as well. So come back over here, new Kotlin class or file. And this one we're just going to call fake books DAO, which is, of course, going to implement books DAO. And once again, let's go ahead and implement the members. Okay, so now in here, we're just going to make a private variable. We're going to say private var books equals mock data dot get local books this time. And to help me with these update functions, I'm going to add another um, function up here. So private fun update book. And then this is just going to take a um, partial book of type partial local book finished. And now inside of here, I'm going to say val ID equals partial local partial book dot ID and then val book equals this dot books ID. And then if book does not equal null, then we're going to say this dot books id dot finished is equal to partial book dot finished um, so basically all that we're doing here whoops we're gonna to have to change that one to a variable um, so all that we're doing here is we are taking in the id of the partial book that we're, we're passing in here we're checking if that book actually exists in our books database, uh, or in this case, not the database in our mock data. And then if that doesn't equal null, so that book actually does exist, then go ahead and update it. Now, um, let's implement a couple more of these functions that we're gonna need. So the get all, we will definitely need. So to do that, I'm gonna, again, just add a delay 500 here which is just going to do a 500 millisecond delay just to kind of mimic the real world scenarios and then return books and then add all. All we need to do is say this dot books equals books. And then for update, all we need to do, I'm going to add another delay 500 and then we say update book and in here I can just pass it that partial book and then finally update all let's delete that add another 500 millisecond delay and then we can say partial books dot for each and let's pass pass a partial book down. So partial book, I'm going to rename um, each of these items is going to be renamed to partial book. And then we're going to say update book, pass in that partial book. Or get all finished. All we need to do is say return books.filter and then it.finished, filter it unfinished. And then 
for these two, get book and then add book. I'm just going to leave those empty for now. So we can go back to books view model test now and set our books DAO equal to our new fake DAO that we just created. So fake books DAO. And let's go back down to this test and remember what we're trying to test. So we got our initial view model and we need to test that our initial, our initial state is actually produced in this view model, which means val um, initial state equals view model dot state dot value. Um, and then all we need to do is run an assert statement down here. And we're going to say initial state is equal to a books screen state where we have books is equal to an empty list and then is loading is equal to true and error is equal to null so that should be all we need let's go ahead and run that test Okay, and that test is done running, and you should actually see this error down here where it says Java Lang is illegal state exception module with main dispatcher had failed to initialize. Basically, this error means that our app is running coroutines, but our test doesn't know how to handle these coroutines. It doesn't know what dispatcher to use. Let's go have a look back in our view model. So if I open up book to view model, um, you could see here, for example, in toggle finished, I view model scoped at launch. So basically, when I make this view model in my test, it's going to be launching coroutines on the main thread because we haven't added the um, dependencies that we need for Gradle. So let's come down into our module app Gradle file. I'm just going to add another category down here. I'm going to call it coroutines test and all we need to add is test implementation this is going to be org.jetbrains.kotlinx kotlinx dash coroutines dash test 1.6.4 uh, or I suppose you could use a newer version as well but let's go ahead and well, not run. Right. Actually, we need to sync our Gradle scripts. Okay, now that that sync is done, we can run our test one more time. And you'll notice, of course, that it still fails. So we're not actually done yet. We need to fix a few things still. So let's go back into our books view model test. And in our books view model test, we need to add some dispatchers here so that we can define um, what dispatchers we want which tests to run on. So I'm going to add a new val up here, private val dispatcher equals standard test dispatcher. And then our private val scope is going to be equal to test scope and within that scope, I'm going to pass my dispatcher that I just made. Okay, now down in our initial is state produced function, we need to change this to um, basically initial state is produced equals scope dot run test. And then hover over the run test. You'll notice we have a warning there, so go ahead and opt in for that experimental coroutines API. Um, but now, even now we could run this and it's still gonna fail. Um, and the reason for that is because we need to use this new test dispatcher that we've created, which is our standard test dispatcher, but our view model is still using dispatchers.main. So how can we do one, we can use this dispatcher in the test and then the other dispatcher, dispatchers.main, in the view model without creating a second version of our view model. Well, basically, we can use dagger hilt to inject the view model, uh, or rather the dispatcher, when we need it in the test and then when we're actually running our application. 
So come back up to your books view model. And in this constructor up here, I'm going to add another one, private val dispatcher. And that's going to be a coroutine dispatcher. And then down in my git books function, we're going to say error handler plus dispatcher. And then the same thing down in my toggle finish function, I'm going to say um, view model dot launch. We're going to say error handler plus dispatcher. So now both of those are using our error handler and then this new dispatcher that we're passing in that we're going to be injecting. So now that we have that, we need to tell Hilt how to provide this dispatcher to our view model. So to do that, go up to your, uh, your dependency injection folder, right click on that. We're going to say new Kotlin class or file. This is going to be an object. And I'm going to name this object uh, dispatcher module. So first in here, I'm going to go ahead and define some custom annotation. So qualifier and then retention. And we're going to use our binary annotation here. And then our annotation class is going to be main dispatcher. Uh, and basically, this is going to allow us to add this main dispatcher annotation to our view model injection of our dispatcher so that we can use different dispatchers in the main program and then in the test program itself. So down here, this is going to be a module and we're going to install that in the singleton component. And then inside this module, all I'm going to need to do is um, basically provide that main dispatcher. So at main dispatcher that provides fun provides main dispatcher. This is going to be a coroutine dispatcher, which is equal to um, dispatchers dot main. And now all I need to do is go back into my view model. And here where I'm providing that dispatcher, I need to annotate that with at main dispatcher. And now that our view model has that annotation, we need to go back into our books view model test because we've now added a argument. So we need to update our git view model function. And at the end of this, all I need to do is just add that dispatcher in. So dispatcher equals dispatcher. And now if I run this test, this actually is going to go ahead and pass. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see now it passes because we are running our, basically we're running our test on our test coroutine dispatcher now instead of on the main dispatcher. So that's exactly what we needed. I should also mention here that because we're using our run test coroutine builder for this on this scope, um, basically any delays that we have. So for example, in our API, we have a 500 millisecond delay there or in our DAO we have, I put several of these delays in that I said was just to mimic real world scenarios. But because we're running this on our test scope, any of these delays that we have are actually going to be run instantaneously. So it's not, even though I have a half a second wait right here, it's not actually going to wait half a second. Okay, so now that we have um, that test up and running, we need to test our next state, which is what happens if our data is loaded as our is loading flag turned back to false. And then do we have data in our books list? So to do that, Let's add another test function down here. This is going to be at test fun content loaded state is produced equals scope dot um, run test. And then in here, we're going to say val test view model equals get 
view model. We're going to say advance until idle. Um, and basically, like I just talked about, this advance until idle is going to allow us to skip all of those. It's going to allow us to skip all of those um, all those delay statements that we have in there. And again, we're going to need them to opt in for experimental um, coroutines APIs. Actually, I'm just going to take that and stick that above our class up here so that we don't have to keep doing that. Okay, so we have the advance until idle. And then finally down here, we have val current state equals test view model dot state dot value. And then we need to assert that our current state is equal to a books screen state um, where books is going to be equal to mock data dot get domain books and then is loading is going to be equal to false because we're done loading and then error is also equal to null. Let's go ahead and run that test again now. And you'll notice this actually failed. So what's going on? Why did this fail? So look at that. Let's go up here and look at actually our repository. So if I look in my um, books repository, you'll see that right here, for example, I'm using dispatchers.io. So we defined a uh, dispatchers module for our main or dispatchers.main, but we haven't defined one for our dispatchers.io. So we need to do that as well. Go back into your dispatchers module. We need to define our IO dispatcher as well. So I'm going to copy this, paste that down below, and then instead of main dispatcher, I'm just going to call this IO dispatcher. Um, so now this is going to give us an IO dispatcher. So down inside of our module, same thing here, we say at IO dispatcher, at provides, and this is just going to be fun, provides IO dispatcher, which is going to return a coroutine dispatcher, which is going to be equal to dispatchers.io. Now, if we go back into our books repository, we need to add a, another field up here. This is going to be our IO dispatcher. So IO dispatcher, we're going to say val dispatcher, the second one, coroutine dispatcher. And basically anywhere we see IO dispatchers down here, we need to replace that with dispatcher. I think that here as well, that needs to be dispatcher and also down in this toggle finish db dispatcher with that set up come back down to your books view model test and you'll notice we have an error here now that's because we added a parameter there that we have to add to our repository so i'm going to just add dispatcher equals dispatcher let's go ahead and run that test one more time there you go. Now you see they both passed because we have them all using the correct dispatcher that they need. Now that we've done um, a couple tests on the view model and seen how to view that, let's look in our domain layer and look at our use cases in there. So we've got three of them here. Let's just pick this toggle finished use case and give that one a test. And basically, this one is just flipping that check mark back and forth. So come back down to our um, your com test example book tracker package. In here, we're going to do a new cotton classer file. And we're going to call this toggle finish use case test. And then inside of this class, um, we're just going to copy these two lines here. We want that dispatcher in the scope in here as well. So pass in the dispatcher in the scope, or don't pass it and copy that in. And then down here, let's go ahead and write a test. So, and again, the reason that we need that um, dispatcher up there 
is because we want to use the standard scope and the test scope because our use case um, that's under test is actually a suspending function. So we need to use our coroutine test dispatcher for that. So um, down here we have at test fund toggle book finished field. And this is going to be equal to our scope dot run test. And we're going to use that run test um, coroutine builder, which of course is going to, we need to import that. And then we also need to opt into that experimental stuff. And I'm actually, again, going to put that above the class so that we only need that once if we define any other functions down here. And the first thing we need to do in here is we need to, uh, we need to add a repository and then some use cases. So val repo equals books repository. And we need to pass in the variables that we need for that. So API equals fake books API DAO equals fake books DAO and then dispatcher equals dispatcher and this is not going to work because I actually need that books DAO so book DAO, books DAO equals fake books DAO um, so we've got a repository we need some use cases down here so val get um, sorted books from cache use case is going to be equal to a get sorted books from cache use case. Um, and we need to pass our repository into there. And then after that, we have val use case under test, which is going to be our toggle finish use case. And inside there, we need to set a repository equal to our repo. And we need to set our get sorted books from cache use case equal to our get sorted books from cache use case that we just defined above. And then after that, we've got our repo and we've got a repository and our use cases set up and added. We need to actually run our load books function. So repo.loadbooks. And then again, we need to run advance until idle, which is going to advance until that um, all the suspending functions in there are done, uh, meaning our book list should now be populated. Down here, val books equals uh, mock data dot get domain books. And then uh, we're just going to send that to a mutable list. So dot to mutable list and then val target equals books um, i'm just going to pick books zero which is going to be our first index within that list and then finally val finished is going to be equal to target dot finished and what we need to do down here is say val updated books equals use case under test uh, target dot ID and then finished. So basically um, the target, which is our book that we're under test, use case under test is that toggle finished. So we're going to take that ID um, and pass it into our use case under test. And then once we do that, we need to advance until idle one more time to give all those suspending functions time to finish. Down here, we could say books zero equals target dot copy finished um, equals to not target dot finished. And then all we have to do after that we just have to simply assert that our updated books is equal to our books. So up here, we ran the use case on our target book. And then down here, I'm simply just setting our books at, tar at index zero. Um, I'm just setting that to uh, finish equals not target dot finished. So essentially, I'm doing what that use case is supposed to be doing manually in the test. 
And then all we have to do is verify that both are updated books that we got from the use case. And then now our list of books that we set manually matches. And once that matches, we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and run that test and verify that it passes as well. And it does. That's it. Pretty simple. That's how you can run tests on a use case. So again, this hasn't been terribly um, thorough and exhaustive of all of the tests that you would need to run to test this entire app. But this is more of just kind of an introduction to unit testing and how we can use them to verify the functionality of the different pieces of our application. Hopefully this has been uh, beneficial for you. And actually this is going to be the last um, the last video in this series. We're going to be done with this now. So hopefully when you look at this application, you've learned a lot by building this and by putting it together. Obviously there's a lot that we still would want to do if we actually wanted to publish this app, right? It'd be nice to be able to delete one of these, or it'd be nice to be able to add another, um, another book into our list here. It'd be nice to have a little picture of the title maybe add some theming to this so that we can have a color scheme that's not just black and white. We would definitely want to uh, do a lot more thorough unit testing on this and then integration testing as well and end-to-end -end testing. And there's just a lot of things that we would need to do. But this series has just been to help you understand and learn some of the basic building blocks in these Jetpack libraries that we have. Hopefully this has been beneficial for you. If it has been, definitely like and subscribe to our channel and then share it with your friends and we will see you in a future video.